Brandis, afternoon storms have forced today's Sox Astros playoff game to be postponed until tomorrow, but the players and fans no doubt are still thunderstruck after last night's four hour and 27 minute marathon victory by the Sox in a must win game three. Did last night's 12 to 6 victory turn the tide for the Southsiders? Joining us to relive last night's excitement and look ahead to tomorrow's game four is Darren Jackson, who teams up with Len Casper on White Sox radio broadcast. Darren is, of course, former White Sox outfielder, played for a number of teams, including the one on Chicago's north side. Darren Jackson, thank you so much for being with us. Oh, Paris, it's a pleasure to be here. Yes, last night's game was a little bit long, but you know what? Had we played, we would have been ready to go today. And, and but you, you get this day off. So first of all, have you you've been associated with this team for a long time? Have you ever seen guaranteed rate field rocking like that? Um, not to that level. Um, if if you consider all things, which means here we are in the postseason, first actual playoff game in front of fans since 2008, and it's the Astros who right now are not America's favorite team. So. <laughs> We had that blackout, you know, everybody in black, isolated orange shirt and jersey here or there. Felt sorry for them, to be honest with you, but the place was shaking, it was rocking, and uh, it was definitely the place to be. C certainly Sox fans let uh, the Astros uh, know about their displeasure with some of their indiscretions in past years. All right, so before we look ahead to tomorrow, the Sox were down 5-1. to one. Their bats had been struggling for the first two games. What finally awakened them, uh, and, and can they keep it going? You know what? I, I think what really awakened them was the fact that they had the right approaches. Um, and then you think about the one particular play, Yasmani Grandal. Um, you know, it's not by design that, that he was running on the grass other than the fact that it's just a brilliant play. And he does have the right of way there. I think he knew that, realized that, didn't do any overt move to try and create a problem. That completely turned the game in our favor from there. Some good things happen, not to mention the two run home run he hit. And obviously, changing a pitcher in the middle of a bat is just something that's so old school. It doesn't really happen anymore, but Dusty Baker did it. He put his pitcher in a position to come in with a 2 0 count, count worked to 3 and 1, and Larry Garcia absolutely crushed a 3 1 fastball exactly like he should. So, those are the points of the game to me that really turn things in the favor of the White Sox. Knocked it straight out to center field. And of course, you were referring to that controversial call. Uh, earlier in the game that Dusty Baker thought should have gone the other way. All right, so tomorrow, uh, Carlos Rodon takes him out. He's had some uh, injury problems. What's his status, and what do you expect from him tomorrow? Well, he says he's ready to go as of yesterday, so I don't think there's really a concern about his health. Um, the key is going to be the velocity. Is it going to be at 95, 98, 99, 90? Um, but one thing I saw with Carlos last time he was out, and I'd never seen him do this, is he established that he can pitch at a lower velocity. He did it at 90 miles an hour for five innings, absolutely shut down an opponent, giving up just one hit. He looked great, his breaking stuff was good, and usually when his velocity is down, he's vulnerable, and that's not the case. He was not, he was pitching for the first time. He wasn't just trying to blow guys away, so that tells me that he seems to be settled into the fact that he can work with higher velocity or lower, and he can figure out how to get opponents out. And that's going to be important because the Astros are one of the smartest teams in baseball. You can't just go out there thinking, oh, I'm just going to lob it up there and surprise them. They'll be ready for whatever he has to offer, so he's going to have to execute. So changing speeds are really important. All right, there's still some controversy. Of course, you know about the comments that Sox reliever Ryan Tapera made last night, seeming to insinuate that at the Astros home ballpark, they're still engaging in some kind of sketchy activity, possibly stealing signs like they got caught doing a few years ago. What do you make of those comments? Um, obviously, Ryan can say whatever he wants. I, I think he's very opinionated and he believes in what he says. But at the same time, look, I come from a, an era where everybody was stealing signs in the sense that if the catcher was not coding his signs properly and there was a runner on second base and they got him, that was on the catcher, do a better job. Or if the pitcher was grabbing his ball a certain way in his glove and showing it to the runner at second base, that's their job to hide how they're doing this, mask the pitches. Um, no technology. I don't believe in that. Don't try and cheat. Don't sit out there with binoculars and a white sock. Somebody in center field. Hey, fastball's coming. Not that kind of stuff. Uh, it, just if you are not good enough to to kind of mask what you're trying to do to the batters, that's shame on you. You should be good enough to deceive the batters. And and by the way, if you think you go ahead and these guys are getting your signs, don't tell them. Let them think they still have the signs. Set them up. Pitch them backwards. Make them think they got it right, and then they're going to be shocked. When all of a sudden they don't have it right, they're going to go, 
whoa, that fastball almost got me in the coconut. That was supposed to be a slider down in the way. So that's how All you right. really counter in the first place. Play, play, play the chess game there. Yeah, like you said, a lot of these things have been part of the game for a long time. All right, so uh, Lance McCullers going for uh, Houston tomorrow. He's had the Sox number. He's had almost everybody's number. Uh, what, what do the Sox have to do to, to get on the board early against him? Well, I think the number one thing for us is we have to lay off the pitches out of the strike zone. Now, look, I know from experience that's year said that he's done because his pitches look like fastballs and we're hunting fastballs in the first place. So you're going to have to look location. You're going to have to make him. I was talking to Ron Kittle about this today, the old school way. He has a great curveball and a great slider. looks like fastballs down the middle. You can't swing at anything that's down the middle. You've got to make those pitches start right at your hip right at your body, and then you'll know they'll end up in the hitting spot. So it's really a discipline. If they have that discipline early in the game, we'll go deeper in counts. He'll fall behind in counts if we're laying off, and then that gives us somewhat of an advantage. Look, we're hoping four times a charm because we've seen him three times this year, and things have not gone well. I would assume at this time, but we haven't got him figured out by now. We're really going to have some problems anyway. All right, uh, Darren Jacks, we all look forward to that uh, game four tomorrow. Must win, and then... Game five, uh, back in Houston, knock on wood. I know that uh, we'll get there. Thank you so much for joining us on your, on your day off here. Appreciate it. Paris, a pleasure. Thanks for having me on.